I need to come clean with you. I'm sick to death. I really am. I've had enough. I'm sick to death of British politics. I'm thinking to myself, what is the point? Let them all wallow in their own shit. Literally. Let them wallow in their own self-pity. Well, no one seems to want to vote for what is actually in their best interest. I know what you're going to say. Getting the Tories out is in your best interest. I can't argue with that. Of course it is. But I'm very concerned that we're jumping from one Tory to another. What choice have we got? Who else have we got to vote for? Who stands a chance? Labour's going to wipe the floor with the Tories. I know some people are going to say, well, we can't be complacent. I was having comments about that in my videos yesterday. Can't be complacent, no. I don't think there's any complacency about it. I think it's a foregone conclusion, though. The Tories will be decimated. I've got no doubt in my mind whatsoever. And I think this latest poll is more on the money. I really do. But where does it leave us? Listen to uh, Yvette Cooper this morning talking about um, getting down so-called illegal and net migration as a whole. You know, legal migration, you know, people who've got visas as well to work in the UK. It's already very, very expensive to do so. Well, this is going to be a coffin nail for British businesses. If we put the squeeze on immigration any more than we already have, we are going to see British businesses, and that includes the farms, and we've seen we've got no food security in the UK, well then, quite frankly, how the hell are we going to support ourselves in case of war? Hmm? You've got China. For just this Saturday, I uh, brought out a, a new law, which basically is a self-sufficiency law. They're going to cut down on imports of grain and what have you and promote more grain production in China. It's like they're getting on a war footing, just in case. You can't have a secure army without putting food in their bellies, can you? No. No one can concentrate or do their job properly if they're hungry. That's just history. Been there before. In fact, we decided to, uh, well, starve 15 million Indians during the war. Got old Churchill to thank for that one. Yeah, great legacy, isn't it, eh? Well, this idea that we can cut down on migration in the UK is for the birds. It really is. We need these people. We ain't making them anymore. No. Fertility rates are down. People seem to think it's socioeconomic, and it's not. Our health is in a real dire place at the moment. We don't have the ability to make the children. I'll take two of my kids. I've got six. For accidents. You know, not accidents of birth, but they were accidents. They were conceived by an accident. The contraception didn't work. I've been fertile, you know, lead in the pencil and all that. And the miss has been fertile. Well, it was easy to conceive, but these days, it's, people have got to work a bit harder to conceive. Sperm counts are down. As a result, so are, well, fertility. Many families are having to take up on, on uh, IVF. So the idea that we're going to be able to produce enough people to do the work that we need to get done is, that is literally for the birds. And the idea that we're going to cut down on even legal migration is for the birds. Now, as an employer myself, when I was uh, in the UK, I employed people, people come and go and all that, you know, in the trades and that. Well, the idea that these Tories, or Labour, could impose workers upon uh, the employer via the job centre is literally for the birds. Unless you're looking for like cannon fodder, just someone to do tasks known for, well, they're going to be there for a couple of days and they get the next one and move on like that because the job they're doing is so demeaning. 
Farmers at the moment are struggling. Okay, Slov itself is predicted because of Brexit, you see. 59% voted for it. You can say tough tea, but you've still got to feed the people. They've got no food security, we're important more. More and more important. Which is also crippling the farmers, yeah, again. The beef farmers, for instance. How is this conducive to having a secure economy? Let alone a safe country. If you haven't got food security, you are not safe. You can literally be cut off from food. Unless you've got the upper hand, militarily, which we haven't anymore. Well, as an employer, I would not want somebody working for me who did not want to be there. I wouldn't want somebody to be working for me who clearly didn't have the skills. It's got to be one or the other. If they want to be there, well, then they'll be willing to learn. If they don't want to be there, they don't want to learn. And I'm, I'm sorry, but many people that come from the uh, job centre, I'm not going to say all, but many people come from the job centre, they were the unemployables in many cases. They did not want to work. Why should I pick up the flipping pieces when I was employing people? Why should it be my responsibility to make the, those losers, quite frankly, bring down my business? Don't want to do it. Why are the farmers going to want British workers who do not work, want to work? In fact, there was a documentary not that long, long ago, I think it was in Peterborough Asparagus or something like that, where they were... They put adverts out for British workers post Brexit, and not one turned up. No, well, actually, no, they did turn up, but no, they didn't come back again. And that particular farm used to have Romanians come, you see. And the thing about these Romanians or well, any uh, Eastern European workers, they're grafters. They are tough people. They're strong people. And they get in there, they work and they graft like belly -o. But what do they do at the end of the season? Do they hang about and not work in the UK? No. They either go back home or they go to the next country within the European Union to work on their farms. Yes, they do grow food in the EU, you know. Yeah. Patch dice nuts, wasn't it? Yeah, OK. <sighs> People are mental, honestly. I was, I, I've really got I have, I've had enough. I'm going to talk about this a bit more tonight, actually, on my live stream, I think. It's at 8.30 p.m. tonight, so every Sunday. I just... Oh, I'm fed up. I'm sick to death of those with no skin in the game telling me how to run my business. OK, oh, I'm an expat. Oh, I mean immigrant living here in France. No, so I'm not employing anybody. But if I was, I'd say up yours. Yeah, I'd give him the, I don't know, the Andrew Jenkins or whatever it is. <laughs> You've got these people in Parliament who came out of flipping university with their PPE uh, <laughs> contracts, how <laughs> contracts, with their university degrees for politics, politics and economics. And they have not got any real-world experience, and they go straight into politics. You get a few of them who might do a bit of a, oh, let's have a couple of business and what have you, but maybe on a managerial level. Maybe they're investing in this, that, and the other. Like James Cleverley and people like that. Or the geezer who started YouGov. You know? They've never had their hands on the tools. So how do they know what I need? They ain't got a flipping clue what we need in the construction industry. No, or Medusiers, or whatever, you know, cabinet makers. How are they going to know? They're not bringing in the people who've got skin in the game, or had skin in the game. You could argue with the military and stuff like that. You could argue, maybe, yeah, like Tobias Elwood and people like that, uh, who were in the forces, you know, that they had skin in the game. But half the time, they don't end up working it, you know, they're not, they don't become a minister for that, apart from the other geezer who's completely out of... Oh, crikey. Yeah. One of the sec uh, ministers for 
the fence. Oh, I don't want to talk about him. Anyway. Then we've got Michael Schatz. What does he know about that? None of them. They've got skin in the game. They're going to tell me, they're going to tell me about my woodwork and what have you. They're going to pick up a hand play, <laughs> such as that, right? And they're going to know what to do with it. No! They're going to have a clue. I think we better put an edge on the tools that works. No, they're going to have a clue. These are lifelong skills. They take a long while to learn. To come out of university and think you're straight into politics. With no skin in the game. And you made a secretary. is ludicrous. And Labour going to follow the same rhetoric. To suck up to their latest right-wing base. And Natalie Elphick. I'm finding it rather painful. I'm finding it, thinking to myself, what is the point. Until we get people, as MPs, that know what it's like to actually do a job, a real job, well then quite frankly I think we're lost. I really do. You know? Okay, it's not all of them, I know, but I think you look at a, quite a strong majority. Ministry of Defence, Grant Schatz, case in point. What the hell is he doing there? We're lost. We're so lost as a country. Blimey. Delusions of grandeur. Anyway, you tell me. Please leave it in the comments down below. I just had enough of it. I really have. <laughs> Please pick up the like button and subscribe to the channel. And don't forget... We're live tonight at 8.30 p.m. It might be a bit of a rant, but we'll see. Toodaloo. But also might be funny, because North Korea has been dropping poo on South Korea. Toodaloo.